around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Try to save the cabin, Chester. The bar and the sheds will soak them down good. All right, Mr. Dillon. Oh, hauling well water takes too long. You better get it from the stream. Well, I'm after the bucket. A sight bigger than these tin pails we got. Here, let me give you a hand. I ain't sick with rust. I don't know how this fellow draws water. It don't seem like nobody hasn't worked this thing for a long time. Well, it's coming some, but the bucket's still a long way down there. Wait a minute, hold it. Maybe I can haul it up by hand. Can you get it? Yeah, I can get it. There. Hold faster now. I will, but whether this rope can hold the bucket or not, it's something else again. Uh, that rope was plumb rotten. Yeah. Well, maybe out in the barn, the shed, you can find something to haul water in. Sure, I, I just don't figure how he got his water. He sure didn't use this well. He? Well, the fellow that lived here, the, the one I'll be dragged out of the cabin. Well, where'd he take him? Yonder on them trees. You check the barn, Chester. I'll see the Aldi. You look kind of singed, Aldi. You all right? He's just a cinder. That's all I can think. He's just a cinder. Out under the blanket here? He ain't a man at all. He's a cinder. Tell, was he alone in the cabin? I couldn't believe it. He was sitting at the table. His head was slumped forward, and there was, there was fire all around. And then I seen he was on fire. He was just sitting there, on fire. Take it easy now. And I got to him, and he toppled off right onto the floor, and he laid there burning. He didn't know it, I, I seen trees burn. I, I seen fields. I seen logs. I never seen a man burn before. Just forget about it. You know, it's funny, huh? A man on fire. First thing you do is put a blanket on him. He's burning hot, so you smother him. You put the fire out, Albie. That's the way to look at it. <laughs> you put a blanket on his right, cinder. Now, you put I'll a be. blanket Stop around it. his Stop cinder. You... <laughs> Were you talking to me, Marshal? Yeah, the blanket. It was in the cabin? A blanket. Oh, it was on the floor right by the table. Well, it's wet. It felt wet when I grabbed it. Uh-huh. That's a funny smell, isn't it, Marshal? Yeah. Whiskey and kerosene together make a funny smell, Alby. Is that what that is? That's what it smells like. Mr. Dillon, can you come back here? Yeah, right away, Chester. You rest yourself, Alby. You've done more than your share. Oh, I, I'm all right, Marshal. Where'd you find them, Chester? In the corral. Behind the barn. Poor things, ain't they puny looking? All thin flesh, bone strung. Yeah. Somebody neglected them for a long time. Mr. Dillon, they're about starved. Any feed in the barn? Ain't nothing in that barn but rusty cans and a broke plow. Everything in there's crumbling, except the rats. Well, there's grass down by the creek. We'll lead them down there. It, it don't seem like this was Indians, does it, Mr. Dillon? Oh, it looks queer, Chester. Everything around here looks queer. Uh, 
At least the barn is still standing and a couple of sheds. Yeah. We've done what we could, Mr. Dillon. You hadn't been riding by and come to fetch us, we couldn't have done this much, Alby. I couldn't do enough alone. Funny, in a way. It ain't too far from Dodge, but you know, I didn't pass one settler on the way in. You didn't see anybody around here? No, huh? not a soul. Huh? It's just odd, that's what it is. Odd, odd as can be. Well, you got to figure he was alone, except for them, them two starving horses. I don't know his name, so can't mark his grave. Can't help wondering about him, though. What's a man like that lives alone, lets his place go to rust and rubble, his horses starve? And that well? I don't know when that's been used. I don't think he drank water, Chester. You mean that, uh, that smell of whiskey on the blanket, Mark? Yeah. Might be he drank himself into a stupor, knocked the whiskey over, along with it a kerosene lamp. And it'd start a fire that'd burn a man to death. Yeah, that must have been the case. Well, if he was all alone, maybe it doesn't matter what we know. Well, for the love of... What? Well, I, Mr. Dillon, look, come up in the creek bed yonder. Maybe he wasn't alone after all. Well, that's just a child. She can't be more than nine or ten. I'm afraid I'm no judge. Who are you? I'm Marshal Dillon from Dodge City. Who are you? Charity. How's that? Charity. Charity Gill. That's my name. It was a big fire, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Y- you live here? Mm-hmm. Well, where you been, Charity? Up the creek. I play up there. Stay up there all I can. I like it up there. You knew about the fire, Charity? I tried to make him move. I told him to, and I I pulled at him, but he was too big. I couldn't move him. I tried. See, I burned my dress. He was your father? No, he married Mama and me when I was little. She said I was to call him Daddy, and I did, but I didn't like him. Where is your Mama, Charity? Oh, she's dead. She died when I was seven. I'm almost ten now. He's dead, ain't he? Yes, he is. I didn't like him. Mr. Young, you, you don't think... I don't know. But it'd be hard to think, wouldn't it, Chester? I'd say you were a pretty healthy young lady. I've never been to a doctor before. You never have. Will you take a tip from me? You stay away from all you can, Charity. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Well, some folks think so. Uh, now then, uh, I guess you can uh, slip into your dress yourself. Yeah, I always do. Oh, well, Marshal Dillon, I'll be waiting for you in the other room when you're ready. I won't be long. All uh-huh. right. What about her, Doc? Oh, she's fine. She sure could use some more meat on her bones, but there's nothing really wrong with her. The way her dress was burned, I thought maybe the fire got to her, too. Well, it's not a sign of a burn. She... You know something? She seems a lot older than ten, doesn't she? I don't know anything about kids, Doc. Well, I don't mean she is older than that. She, she just seems it. older than her years. Well, I guess she's seen a lot you talked to her much about the fire? Uh, she said she tried to move her stepfather. Couldn't. I suppose. She didn't like him. She keeps saying that. I'm hungry, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, well, we'll fix that pretty quick now. Yeah, Matt, get Chester to eat with her. Hey, he sets a mighty good example. <laughs> he does at that, doesn't he? Uh, Charity, will you tell us about the fire? What about it? Oh, how it started, for instance. Well, it's almost happened lots of times. Mama used to tell him that it happened sometimes if he wasn't careful. He'd drink out of that jug and then he'd fall asleep, and if the lamp was near, he'd knock it over. That's what happened this morning? I guess so. 
I went down to the creek to get my breakfast. He didn't talk to me ever, so I didn't talk to him. He was just sitting there with a jug. Your breakfast, Jerry? Yeah, the berries are nice down by the Oh, you ought to eat more than berries for breakfast. I thought you wanted to know about the fire. That's right, we do. When I came back from breakfast, the lamp was on the floor and everything was burning. I I tried to make him move, but he was too big. And when my dress started to burn, I I ran away. It was just you and your stepfather, that's all that lived there, huh? Mm-hmm. A- and Coley and Sue. Uh, Coley and Sue? Yeah, the horses, Doc. We brought them in the moss. Oh. Marshall? Yeah, Charity. Will I live with you now? Uh, well, uh... No. Uh, we'll, we'll find a place for you, but... But uh, I like you. Well, yeah, but... Uh, you Don't see... you like me? Well, well, sure. Sure, I, I like you all right, honey. You, you want to say something, Doc? Yeah. Huh? Oh, no, 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 I don't... Oh, believe. come on, Doc. Help me make her understand now, would you? you? You wouldn't let me be alone, would you? Well, no, Charity. I, I, I wouldn't do that. I do. Are you in a hurry? Well, it's going to be dark before long. I want to get you settled with Ma Smalley for the night. Who's Ma Smalley? Well, she's a woman who runs a boarding house. What's a boarding house? Well, you know, you board there. You get a room to sleep in and your meals. Can I eat with you? Well, sure. Sometimes, maybe. Sure. I, I can cook a little bit. I mean, when there's food in the house, I can cook. Well, yeah, I bet you can you have a little girl like me? Uh, no. Little boy? No. Why not? Well, I, I'm not married, Charity. Well? Well, what? Why don't you have a little girl, little boy anyway? Now, you listen to me, little lady. Oh, you were going to call me Charity? Uh, yeah, well, you ask an awful lot of questions, Charity. Well, that's how you learn asking questions. Well, well, sure, that's how you learn. Then why don't you have a little girl like me? I told you, Charity, I'm not married. Well? Come on, Charity, you're going to like Ma Smalley. Does she have a little girl? Uh, No. Is she married? Well, I think she used to be, yeah, but... uh... Well? Charity? I just don't understand. I know you don't, honey, but I just don't figure I'm the one to make you understand. Now, come on. Well, evening, Marshal. Evening, Rob. What's that you got there? This is Charity, Rob. Well, she's a young and a girl. Yeah? Do you have a little girl? Don't start that again, please. Well, you talk right up to her, don't you, Marsha? Is Ma around, Rob? Can't start that soon enough with a young'un. Girl especially. Can't give them the head, you know. Got to lay down the law right early in life. I was asking after Ma. Where is she, inside? No, she is not. Well, then where is she, Rob? Meddling. That's where she is, thinking and talking free with a whole sewing circle of half-wit women who should have been buggy-whipped a long time ago. Is he... Mean, Marshal? Oh, yeah, he's mean as a butterfly. Ain't no mean about it. Just setting down the facts, stating the case, you might say. Now, if someone had put Ma and them others in their place when they was this young'un's age, we'd have had a warm supper this evening and a few of the comforts us men both were entitled to. Rob, you're going to run down pretty soon and tell me where Ma is? Clean all the way to Wichita. Wichita? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Left on the morning, Santa Fe, big as you please. Her and the Dorsey girls, Boss Grimmick's wife, Fanny Dorsey, Rob, Claire Jones. Hold, hold up a minute, will you? You're calling off every woman in Dodge. They can't all be in Wichita. Well, you're the marshal. Make yourself a house-to-house search. There ain't a woman left in town, and they ain't going to be for five days running. Well, what's going on? Suffering. Rob, 
you talk straight to me now That's or so... what they call it, suffering. They all met for it. Women from all over the state, according to Ma, pouring into Wichita, and every single one of them has got suffering on their mind. Suffering? You mean suffrage? Oh, it's one and the same thing. It's that sneaky way women folks has a talking. Why don't they just come out plain and say that they want the vote? No, they got to call it suffrage. Suffrage. Well, you let them vote a while and see if the country ain't suffering. I'm awful sleepy, Marshal. <sighs> yeah... Me too, Charity. you'd want to take care of her, now, isn't it? In a saloon? There's nothing natural about that. She can sleep in your room, can't she? In my room, the long branch, any of this. It's no place for a little girl. You should know it isn't. You think one of my jail cells is better, maybe? Huh? Well, it's no worse. Honestly, Matt, I, I know this is a problem, but I, I don't think I'm the solution. There must be some place in town, or even out of town, some family. We rode out to Albie Stevens. He's got eight kids. Yeah, they're stacked up out there, and they're all boys. What about Mrs. Stevens? She's gone to Wichita with Ma Smalley and the rest of them. Eight kids, and she wants to vote, too? Well, Albie says she went for the outing. I guess she can't blame her for wanting to get away. Mm. Hello. Oh, hello, honey. Did you get the drink you wanted? No, the man said he didn't have any milk, so I had some water. She ought to have milk, man. What? Well, yeah, but... Uh... Well, they keep a cow at Delmonico's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess they do at that. Uh... Well, go and get it some. Teddy will be all right here for the while. Uh, here, honey. You, you sit on here. And you wait with Miss Kitty, huh? You're not going to leave? No, I'll be back as soon as I get you some milk. I like him. Yeah. I like him, too. You're pretty. Do you think so, honey? Mm -hmm. And you smell pretty, too. Only... Only what? You got your face painted. Mama used to tell me only Indians painted their faces. <laughs> Maybe your mother was pretty enough without using powders and things. Oh, she was pretty. Freckles. She had freckles all over. Well, that proves it. I don't have any freckles. This is a funny place, ain't it? Kind of funny, Yeah. Sometimes I don't understand grown-ups, Miss Kitty. Outside, there's alfalfa and sweet clover to smell, and quick water to drink, and currants and wild gooseberries and sheep shower to eat. But grown-ups are always crowding together indoors and smelling smoke and drinking whiskey and talking loud. What is that? I don't know, Charity. I, I just know they do. Huh? And if they didn't, I'd be out of business. Now, Mr. Dillon, I just don't see the need of this at all. I've never been in jail before in my life. Oh, stop acting like an old woman, Chester. You're not in jail now, really. Poor Hedrick McPeters was in the same doggone cell just last week before they took him off to Hayes City to hang. Now, you listen to me, Chester. It's been a long day. I had about all the jaw and I can handle. Charity's going to sleep in your bed. I'm going to sit up in mine, and you're going to sleep on that cot there, and that's the end of it. Now, shut up. Yes, sir, I understand, but I don't see why i got to be locked up to You're not it. locked up, Chester. You closed the door shut on me. All Mr. right, Jones. all right, all right there. Better? Is that better? Huh? Yes, sir, it is. A sight better. Good night, Chester. Good night, Miss Jones. Yes, I guess Charity's asleep by now, all right, hmm? Now, she probably was before we started this ruckus, yeah. Oh, that poor little thing. Whatever is going to come of her, Mr. Jones? No, I don't know, Chester. I don't know anyone who wants kids that hasn't got them. I sure never run up against 
us anything like this before. She plumb gone on you. Tags long like a little stray. Too bad you can't keep her. Oh, you're out of your head. Well, now I can see it ain't the most practical thing in the world. Chances are you'd feel a lot better having a little boy, but all the same... Chester. Yes, sir? I'd feel a lot better having nothing at all. No boy, no girl. Well, yes, I suppose so. You're more used to that. Good night, Chester. Good night, Mr. Dillon. You're tired of me, too. I'm not tired of you, Charity. I, I just don't rightly know what to do with you. You don't want me to live with you, do you? Well, honey, you can't very well. You, you've seen how I live here. It's not the right place for a little girl. You ought to have a home. A real home, Charity, with folks close to you who see that you're cared for, who... Who will love you. Mm -hmm. Like my Aunt Annie. Aunt Annie? Oh, maybe I hadn't told you about Aunt Annie. Oh, maybe you haven't. Well, at first, I, I thought it would be nice to live with you. But mostly you and I just walk around. I get tired. Charity, where does Aunt Annie live? Just on yonder from where I used to live before the fire... Maybe five miles, not far. Ah. I like you, Marshal Dillon. Yeah. Well, I like you too, Charity. <laughs> and uh, tomorrow morning, we're going to ride out to Aunt Annie's, huh? Mm -hmm. oh, I think I'll sleep better now. Yeah. <sighs> Me too, honey. <laughs> Me too. things you eat because they taste good, and some things you eat because they're good for you. But Frito's corn chips are one snack you can eat for both reasons. Gun Smoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gun Smoke by Kathleen Height with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Ann Whitfield, Joseph Kearns, and Lawrence Dobkin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Guns. Smoke.